Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from June 3rd through June 10th, 2020. And wow, we have a lot going on astrologically. Not only do we have the eclipse on June 5th at a brand new eclipse point, which is 16 degrees of Sagittarius, we also have a very significant shift with Venus. And I'm going to talk about that today. Also, I am going to touch on some of the energies that are unfolding in the world and specifically in the USA. I think it would be interesting to look at what is happening astrologically, as well as how the energies are going to unfold throughout 2020 and over the next few years. So we're going to cover quite a bit in today's show, and I'm going to get started by sharing with you what we have going on with Venus. So Venus is retrograde, and in fact, as I do this show live on June 3rd, Venus, Venus makes what's called an inferior conjunction with the sun at 13 degrees of Gemini. And this inferior conjunction is when retrograde Venus, who has been contemplating, reviewing what matters to her, reviewing what's in her heart, reviewing what she loves, assessing where she's at in her life and in her world and determining what is really supporting her? What does she need to receive? We, we have some inquisitive energies that come up, especially with Venus in Gemini, where we're really thinking about things that maybe we haven't thought about for a while. And as she meets up with the sun at 13 degrees of Gemini, she is reborn, rebirthed, and she is really activated by the sun in Gemini in a very rare cycle of energy. The transiting energies of Venus are really fascinating to study, and I'm going to keep this rather simple because it can easily get complex, but if you are interested in going deeper into Venus, into her cycles, into what is associated with the Venus cycles, there's a really good book called Venus by Anne Macy. I strongly recommend it because Venus is a very fascinating personal planet to study. So as she makes this inferior conjunction with the sun at 13 degrees of Gemini, she has a new beginning here. And in fact, it's a whole new start that lasts for eight years and it will reach a full spectrum of energy in four years. So similar to even a moon cycle, Venus is being rebirthed here at this, it's essentially like a new moon. She's a new Venus with the sun. And this is when she actually is hidden from the sky, in the sky for about eight days. You can't see her. And then she returns and she is a morning star Venus. And the morning star Venus now trails behind the sun and her energy is really being reassessed. So here Venus meets up with the sun. She disappears. She goes within. She gets really clear on what do I love? What do I love right now? What do I need to reprioritize, reconsider, and really assert my energy towards to amplify what matters to me in my heart and in my life, in my work, in my relationships, in my friendships, etc. Every area of your life, Venus is reprogramming us. And as she meets up with the sun, she is getting that infusion of light, of neutrinos, of activation, of strength, of power to establish her new values going forward. So this is a big deal because here we are each being asked to establish something for the next eight years. So in your chart, you want to look at where 13 degrees of Gemini is. And this is where you are being asked to get really clear on what you love, what you need, what you want, what you desire to receive. This is an activation of divine feminine energies. Uh, this is a birthing of a feminine cycle for all of us. And it's going to reach a full expression four years from now, which will be actually on June 4th, 2024. Mark your calendars if you want. And this is where today's Venus reaches a point of fullness. Okay. So it's a good time to make even a four-year plan 
in this Gemini area of your house, uh, sorry, this Gemini area of your chart, the house that Gemini is in, and to look at where there perhaps have been parts of yourself that you didn't access. You didn't realize this is what you needed in this area of your life, okay? So the house is very important because the house is the environment or the area of life where this energy is coming up for you. And you're being asked to set your intentions here, especially over the next week or so, of where you've had a void in this part of your life, of where you've had maybe an emptiness or a sense of unfulfillment or dissatisfaction. And now here is Venus bringing in her energy and her loveliness to support your development of exactly what you need and what you want in this house, in your astrological chart. So again, 13 degrees of Gemini. And this is going to be something that you've maybe even seen how this part of your life has been changing and now there's room for greater clarity on what you need and what you want. The Venus rebirth process does require a gestation period, does require that we go inward and we understand what it is that is essential to us now. So make sure you're not stuck in wanting something that you don't really want, meaning Venus and Gemini is like we have lots of ideas and we can say, oh, I really want this and I really want that. But then take that energy and put it in your heart. Is that what your heart wants? Is that what your heart needs? Is that what really gets you excited or feels strong or feels passionate? Is that something that really resonates with you or do you just think it does? And this is part of the exercise of really ensuring that you're being honest with yourself about what you want and what you need. Because some things are a great idea. Oh, that sounds great. Looks good on, looks good on paper. Uh, I should have that. Or maybe that's what I thought I wanted. And then as you drop the energy into your heart and you listen to your body and your body's response, you're actually going to have greater clarity on whether or not it's truly what you need and what you want. So that's a good exercise to do right now as you are putting together a list of intentions of what you want to rebirth in your life, of what calls to you, what is correct for you, uh, what activates love, what activates a sense of feeling very strong and clear in who you are, a sense of I'm worth this, I am so darn worth this, um, even a sense of Looking at relationships, which is, of course, another Venus domain, relationships, friendships, partnerships, siblings, that's important right now with the Gemini energy, and looking at where those connections can be reinforced, right? What relationships to give more energy towards, which ones are really on track for you and really supportive and really beneficial and then, of course, perhaps pulling back your energy to any that are not on the same path or same trajectory. And again, this is something that you'll just feel in your heart uh, because you could have a sense of, well, I, I relate to this person uh, when we need to talk about our kids, but we don't have much more to go on other than that. And, you know, I think we all have those relationships in our lives and in our world. There's some people that you only have certain things in common, very normal and that's, I, I feel like that's actually worth sustaining. Like there's something about the Gemini energy that's also making it clear to us, you know, the people we need in our community, in our neighborhoods, you know, the people that we see daily, we see at school, we see um, out in the supermarket. It's sort of like those relationships are what they are. But this Venus retrograde and this new Venus energy is also asking you, to make sure you're honoring, it's like taking 80% of your energy and ensuring that that's being shared in the right places. Because if you look at 20% of the relationships in your life, or perhaps it's 30%, uh, there's only so much you can do or give or participate. 
in those relationships. So this is looking at where you want to invest 70 to 80% of your energy or whatever feels right for you and how that is meant to be um, something that you refuel, that you really rise up into understanding that it's possible in this new Venus cycle to absolutely create the relationships, friendships, connections that you need and to make that perhaps an intention. Um, if, if your heart is open and you want a new love relationship or if you're really looking to connect with new friends um, or you really want new people that you work with, um, you know, this Venus energy is all over our lives. It's everywhere. But look at where this 13 degrees of Gemini is in your natal chart because that's where you're really being supported to set a new intention here of what you're going to require energetically and emotionally. Um, I also feel that there's an energy here around allowing yourself to keep moving forward without feeling like you have cords. This is so funny. Okay. I'm actually, I'm seeing this as a masculine energy where on the back, like the right back of the, well, in the middle of the back, there's this bungee cord that keeps going back to something, or it's like feeling tethered to someone or feeling tethered to something. Like I'm feeling this is again, like a very masculine energy that feels like no matter how many steps I try to take forward, I always get pulled back. And I feel like this is a new, there's some kind of new freedom coming around these energies because this 13 degrees of Gemini is exactly opposite the eclipse on Friday at 16 degrees of Sagittarius. So if you have felt tethered or bungee corded to someone or something, um, you know, kids are involved or families involved or finances are involved or something. It's like, it's like that tether represents the past, you know, the, the past obligations and commitments. And I, there's going to be turning points this summer, especially because this eclipse energy is either going to be like stretching. I, okay. I'm seeing like a stretching of a cord and then it dissolves and it just kind of dissolves into something like there's a freedom now, like there's a freedom, there's a release. There's no more being tethered. There's no more being chained. And this, um, of course, I realize this could only be speaking to certain people, but what I'm feeling around this is a release valve. Like there's a release happening for a, again, I'm feeling this is a masculine energy and you can apply this to your life. However, that works for you, whether, um, that feels like you, you know, are, are masculine energy predominantly in your life. But I feel like this is about the masculine constructs of responsibility um, that we all have. And we all have things that we have to take care of in our life. And we have obligations and things we need to attend to, our commitments, things we can't just walk away from. Um, you know, there, there's something about we've really had to maybe walk a line with some things. And I'm feeling like the shifts of 2020 are moving us into these new commitments and new responsibilities because there's a, a freedom. Again, it's a dissolving energy that it's like free to go. Expiration dates are coming up. Um, a sense of there's the next adventure where you're needed. This is part of the new eclipse energies coming in and these eclipse energies being in Sagittarius and later in the year Gemini, there's this overlap right now of the new chapters starting with big endings and clearings around what no longer energetically connects. And it's interesting because I wish I could describe it better, but I'm seeing it as this cord, going back to this cord, this, this tethering, um, it is only strong in the 3D. It isn't active in the 5D. Like that's where it's dissolved because again, going back to masculine energies, there, there've been so much work, so much work has been required of masculine energies. And now Mars is in Pisces, which is a place of completion, release, forgiveness, 
being set free for the energy to transmute and begin a new start. So the masculine energies are beginning a new sense of self, a new experience, a new life, a new start, a new, ch- I mean, new, 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 because Mars is going to be in Aries, energy of beginnings, the energy of a whole new adventure from the end of June into January. So there's this newness coming in, and I feel like there's already been the dissolving of attachments and cords, but it's interesting because part of what I'm seeing is that you could feel like I'm getting that image of an a, um, astronaut who is doing a spacewalk or something, and they're, they're just, they're connected to the International Space Station, but they're just like floating and there's no gravity and you're just not grounded and what's going on. And it's sort of the sense of really being in between, being in between the new start and the old thing being gone. So what this is about is being okay with what could feel like a free fall or being without gravity. Um, It is a sense of surrender. It is a sense of okay, I'm just trusting and I don't know what's happening. And so if you were to take a look at the different types of masculine archetypes and the different ways that the masculine energy shows up, well, this would also be related to the armor we wear with our egos or the parts of ourselves that are very much wanting to be in control and aware of of everything in our environment. I feel like there's a dismantling of these energies because it's not needed. It's really fascinating. I know, especially when you look at the current um, climate, it's like there is a dismantling of masculine energies. And, but for each of us in terms of what that means at our egoic level, um, what that means in our sense of self-identity, what that means and how we have maneuvered through our lives and in our world. And it's part of this rebalancing of the masculine with the feminine that is really new um, for, I would say, almost all of us at this level of consciousness. And so this week is all about these energies coming up and coming out and staying mindful of both sides of yourself, okay? So that Gemini energy being about duality, being about the left and the right, um, also being about the masculine and the feminine and how these two energies dance within you, how they interact, how they converse, how you're listening to your masculine and your feminine selves, where that goes, what that's like, and just even the honoring of that process. Because as the masculine energy is dismantling in a way that could feel out of control, um, if there has been too much armor, there's also this strong Venus energy, this strong feminine energy coming in that's providing the trust, the understanding. I also feel like the Venus energy is is really supporting some of the voids. And I'm seeing it as part of the creative process. I'm seeing it part of the spiritual growth process, part of the intuitive development process. It's almost like all these these areas of life could really be enhanced for you at this time. Meaning, oh, I, I have time to go do something artistic or something creative, or I have time to do something that really feels right for me. It's like there's an opening into what feels good. And part of the stepping away from that masculine armor, part of that, this reprogramming of making sure that even if you've been tied down with commitments and responsibilities and things that are heavy or things weighing on you, that now there's new energy coming forth this week, especially, and in fact, today, June 3rd, especially, that's opening you up to some new ways of maneuvering through this chapter. And then the other way that this theme is showing up is that Mars in Pisces has been receiving squares from the planets in Gemini. So just had a square to Venus retrograde, and we'll also have a square to the sun coming up on June 6th. 
and this happens at 16 degrees of Pisces and 16 degrees of Gemini. Now, this is really interesting because it also is happening during the eclipse, right? And that eclipse at 16 degrees of Sagittarius has set up a very dynamic T-square. So the lunar eclipse at 16 degrees of Sagittarius is opposing the sun and Venus in Gemini. And then all three, the moon, sun, and Venus are squaring Mars at 16 degrees of Pisces and then also squaring Neptune at 20 degrees of Pisces. So we have what's called a mutable T-square. And mutable energies are all about change. What is needing, to, where we're needing to make a choice is there's a restlessness with the mutable signs. There's a sense of, I don't want to commit. I don't want to um, say yes, because I might say no later, vice versa. You might say no and then change your mind. Um, this is the energy of things being open and to be okay with the flow. And the strongest energy here is this Neptune at 20 degrees of Pisces. And it's going to be in effect for the next week after this eclipse. So I feel like this eclipse here on Friday is revealing to us a lot of endings, a lot of what's over and complete that you've known. It's like there's something about the fact that it's probably not new. Okay, it's it's not it, it maybe it's just coming to your awareness, but I feel like for many people there's been a build up. There's been a development. You've been doing the work, you've been doing the healing, you've been growing, you've been understanding things, and then you reach this understanding that there's just no connection or there isn't something in your heart that's really there anymore or there isn't something about your future or where you want to go that's correct. Like I feel like there's this understanding for so many people around a transition and an ending because there's energetic completions that you can't ignore and you can't deny and you maybe have played some games with yourself about that, but there's a sense of, no, there's, there's something that's completing for me because there is a new energy calling me forward. And I feel like this eclipse is really powerful and potent in committing to where you need to go next. So the Sagittarius energy is about adventure. It's about the bigger plans we have in life, uh, whether that's the bigger plans to travel, uh, the bigger plans of understanding like philosophy and education and legal issues. Um, it's the bigger understandings of spirituality or religious structures. It's understanding, well, what is the bigger picture of it all? And so when we have an eclipse, a lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, and remember, this is a new eclipse point. We have not had an eclipse here in way over a century. There's an opening to a higher understanding. And there's something new calling you forward. And I feel like part of what is opening up is like I'm seeing it as this kind of like a crack in the, I'm seeing an egg, but the egg represents the aura and the opening of your aura into a higher dream into the next call of your soul, into the next potentials and possibilities within a new energy paradigm. And so that's why a part of you is truly aware of a closing out and a completion. And what I'm seeing, it's pretty simple. It's almost like if you were to write down on a piece of paper what you have learned, what you've healed, what you've come to understand, I see this piece of paper, like then you just hand it over to Neptune and Neptune takes it away. Okay, great. You're done. All right. You're free to go. Okay, sure. So there's this removal energy. And I do have a video for you on YouTube that talks more about this Sagittarius full moon lunar eclipse on June 5th. Um, if you want to go into more specifics about the chart and the energies, but understand that there's something you're ready to release. And there's a lot in this time period that can feel unstable. And that destabilizing energy, now I'm seeing how it means come back to your core, to your solar plexus, to that 
third yellow chakra and source your energy from there, whether that is through visualizations or meditations or just your general intent. You want to be sourcing and connecting to your solar plexus because it will always lead you properly because it's your power and it's activating what is true for you and it's reminding you of it's like that GPS system that never really turns off, even though we can turn it down or silence it. It's always on. This is also important because you want to be regularly working with your body consciousness. And that gets us out of our mind, our cerebral energies. Now, the Gemini energy is strong right now, so there is support for the mind and the cerebral energies. However, we always have access to various energetics that support what we need. And as you go into your body and you trust your body, you trust your energy systems, you trust your chakras, you, you trust what is available to you to work with, you're going to be able to fine tune your answers, your decision making, your needs, your desires, what you want, where you're going to go next. It's really incorporating all of these energetics that are going to help with being in alignment as we move through June and July. And, you know, these are very big months. Uh, we are seeing it already in terms of the protests and various energies that are coming out. I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment. But please note that it's also an exciting time for awakening consciousness and for humanity's understanding of bigger cycles that are at play. And again, you come back to yourself, you come back to your solar plexus, you come back to steering your ship with your own navigation system, and you will be making the best possible choices for yourself. And in fact, that is an intention that you can easily assert right now, is I am clearly making the best possible decisions for myself right now. I am very aware of what is in my highest and best good now. I am connected to what I need and what I want right now. And I know that everything that I need will be provided for. And the more that you can also assert your ability to receive that's also going to be beneficial. And in fact, it strongly connects with this new Venus cycle where you're really saying, I know that what I need is going to show up effortlessly and easily. I know that the resources I need, the support I need, um, if you need anything that supports how you're living right now, your survival needs, if you need any career support, family support, friendship support, etc., Assert that you are being provided for right now and that you're able to receive exactly what you need. And this is important because of how we can block what we need by not receiving. And it happens in small ways and in big ways, but it's looking at your ability to receive that's going to open you up to these new manifestations. And in fact, this is part of what I teach in Mastering Abundance in your spiritual business, which is still on sale for 33 bucks uh, when you use coupon code GROW. So that information will be, be below this podcast. But it's part of why I wanted to help you with these energies right now because of this new Venus cycle, because of this understanding of what you want to be in alignment with and to receive. So know that that's strongly supported right now. We're in a big cycle of getting clear on what you need and what you require, what you energetically require in your life. So we're living in a big time and this is a big month. So we have the new Venus energy on June 3rd. We have this Sagittarius lunar eclipse on June 5th. We have a very dynamic mutable T-square in effect for a number of days during this eclipse period. Mercury is now in Cancer and is in fact in retrograde shadow because Venus, excuse me, Mercury is going to be moving from 14 degrees of Cancer. You can round up to 15 degrees. That's where he's going to station retrograde 
and that will be coming up here very soon. Uh, in fact, it is on June 18th, June 17th, June 18th, depending on your time zone, is where Mercury stations retrograde 15 degrees of Cancer and then travels back to 5 degrees of Cancer. So right now, Mercury is in retrograde, meaning we all have to slow down. Uh, and in Cancer, we can be inconsistent and a little bit moody, a little bit, I don't know about that. Let me think about it. Give me some time. I don't want to rush. Give yourself time right now and know that anything that you start, you know, you might have to come back and revisit and that there is an energy here of trusting what feels right. So it's interesting because even though the sun and Venus are in Gemini, you know, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is in Cancer. It's going to be retrograde pretty soon. There is an interesting energy here of really checking in with your heart to not be too much in our heads. And this is a time of feeling into something, feeling in to a decision, feeling in to a choice, feeling in to an opportunity. And how does that work for you? Because it's different for all of us, of course, and it will vary depending on the water signs that you have in your astrology chart. Whereas if you have a lot of water, it's very natural. It's how you operate. It's your flow. But if you don't have very many water signs, then you could feel out of your element. You could feel um, even a frustration that things aren't being decided or things aren't happening right now or right away. With the cancer energy, we're learning to trust, to trust ourselves, to trust what feels right, to trust uh, what our body is telling us, what your gut is saying, and to make sure you're not solely operating based on other people's needs. Because cancer energy will give itself to everybody, and it's very kind and very caring, and what do you need? Can I bring you a coffee? And so it's a great friend. Absolutely a wonderful friend, but part of the balance or learning of the cancer energy is in the boundaries and in what you do not have to do for other people. You don't have to be everyone's mother. You don't have to bring coffee for the office. You don't have to make the meal um, every night. It's sort of like, what are you overdoing? So I feel like part of what we're understanding is where our energy needs to be respected, where the boundaries need to show up. And this Mercury retrograde is going to show that to you. It's going to show you where you need new boundaries. Um, so stay aware, of, stay aware of that. And that can help with understanding what June and July will bring your way. So now I want to touch on um, what is happening here, especially in the U.S. I know that um, there's a lot happening with protests. And, you know, by the time you hear this podcast, things could be very different and change. But when I look at the astrology, the one thing that was so evident here is that the astrology of the United States natal chart is strongly activated right now and over the next number of years. And so the natal Pluto is at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and that is strongly activated when Jupiter in Capricorn hit 27 degrees. And that means Jupiter opened up some of the bigger Plutonic energies that have been buried under the surface, that have been deeper in the earth, so to speak, and opened up what needs to be transformed. And so Pluto in Capricorn is about power, government, control, big business, politics, authorities, leadership, who's running the show, who's in charge, uh, the, the patriarchal structures, um, the societal constructs of our lives. Capricorn is the energies of, of government, of law enforcement, of services that are meant to provide a framework for society. So we could ask some deeper philosophical questions here about, well, what is the purpose of government? 
what are the current societal needs that are not in place? And then where in the foundation does does it all have to be torn apart and taken down? So we have a very big energy here of renovation and transformation, but it's at a very significant level that's bringing down what we have used, the constructs that have been in place. And so there are trigger events that reveal where change is required and in fact where change is going to be happening over the next number of years, especially as Pluto returns to 27 degrees of Capricorn in 2023 and 24. So what we're seeing now is a preview of bigger changes that are unhappening, unfolding. And yes, I am focusing on America, uh, talking about the U.S. chart, but it's worldwide because of how our lives are all interwoven, how we are all connected to each other all over the planet, and that nothing uh, exists or happens in a vacuum. So these are very significant world changes that are unfolding, and they're happening at different levels of consciousness. And so I want to talk about that because... It's very important to understand that there is an energy of earth consciousness, which is what you see is what you get. And this is the power of the media and images. This is the power of what you see on TV. It's like you see it and you believe that it's real. And it is real in terms of something is happening, but it only has the consciousness of showing you a certain story, maybe not the full story, maybe not all the information, but it's showing you what is happening. And earth consciousness is very prevalent, especially in the 3D, um, especially within the current structures of government and politics and business, because these are energies that are all about our real world, our physical lives, uh, and how, how things are shown to us. So it's absolutely the power of the media is earth consciousness. And as you go up into higher consciousness, awakening consciousness, then you start to have new energetic awareness and you ask new questions and you may ask a question of is this real um, are these people being paid is there another energy behind the scenes that is promoting these actions or behaviors what is really happening at a bigger picture level and so awakening consciousness is where we question what we see we question what is and we wonder what is happening that is not obvious now on the planet there are multiple agendas and these agendas in basic terms relate to dark and light and as i've talked about in the show there's a big energy and spiritual war happening right now between the dark and the light and in the united states especially everything is at stake in a way that most people are not aware of because there's lots of sheep, um, there's lots of people of earth consciousness um, who aren't questioning, who aren't wondering, who aren't aware, and that's as it should be at this time. But what is happening is that these multiple agendas are playing out at multiple consciousness levels. And so they're really going for the earth consciousness of what you see is going to create your reality. So what we have are agendas that are hidden, agendas that are covert, um, also agendas that are quite obvious and quite clear. And what we're navigating is this information. We're navigating between different agendas. And the agendas that are at play right now are ones of division. And there are ways that humanity has been divided for centuries. And they are kind of the reliable go-tos, if you will, uh, which is very unfortunate. Uh, but there are ways that people will always have a reaction, take a stand, and want to do something because of what's been triggered within them, which is very valid and appropriate and understandable. Um, some of the ways that we are divided regularly is through religion, um, is through family issues, is through race, um, is through economic systems, um, is through different ways that we separate ourselves from each other, and there are agendas on the planet 
that want us to stay separated, that want us to fight each other, that want us to be in fear and that want to promote the anger and to promote the division. So it's important to understand this. It's important to just have this awareness in your mind and then do what you need to do in your life, right? With whatever actions, whatever choices and behaviors are right for you. Um, No one can tell you that. That's your own choice, your own energy, your own free will. But understand that there are, again, I'm calling them agendas, that don't want us to move past certain division themes because they retain their power when you and I are fighting or when we're divided or when um, we can't agree. And these are energies that also relate to a bigger cosmic consciousness, okay? A bigger understanding of the power of this planet, the power of humanity, the power of Earth. There's a lot of resources here on this planet that ETs, extraterrestrials want and have harvested and taken off the planet. And there are resources that uh, they don't want, but there are resources in humanity's energy, And that, again, the more that we are divided, the more that we weaken ourselves. So in terms of these, um, let's just take protests, right, and rioting. There are peaceful protests, right? There are peaceful ways that people are taking a stand or communicating. Um, Now, they could be playing into something that they're not aware of, but that's okay. Like, I feel like part of what is happening here is that There are those at certain levels of consciousness who are actually being very judgmental. And you you can do that if you want, but then look at how we're in this big cycle of change and people change in different waves, okay? There's waves of change. There's waves of growth. There's waves of healing. And it's almost like you can't, it, it actually doesn't help the growth occur when you judge people at a different level of consciousness and the judgment energy shuts down growth and shuts down self-awareness. This is also strong with the Sagittarius full moon lunar eclipse because Sagittarius does rule opinions, uh, righteousness, uh, what you know, what you believe, you have all the answers. These are the lower expressions of Sagittarius. So we have to understand that on this planet, there's multiple ways of consciousness and we come back to some basic principles around knowing where you're at and what's best for your growth and your consciousness is your true power. And that even if there are certain things playing out in the masses or in the collective that don't resonate with you, that's where you are the observer. And that's where we're each looking at, okay, how can I direct this energy forward? What can I do to participate in the higher realms, the higher consciousness? This is where the collective meditations are wonderful. This is where something can happen that is the way is paved by higher consciousness. So that's what's really exciting. It's almost like I'm getting the image of a store that's going to open. The doors are about to open, but there's like this, there's a collection of people ready to go into the stores. And it's like, if you can open those doors of consciousness, open those doors of awareness, it will help people move through and into the next paradigm based on their own free will, based on their own desire to do so. So there's a lot of energies at play right now, and it's going to continue. It's going to continue throughout the rest of the year and into the next few years. Um, This is not going away, especially when we talk about the deeper issues of uh, marginalized populations, of racism, systemic racism, um, white privilege, all these things that are are very big, especially in the United States. Um, They're big globally. There's all these ways that humanity is being reprogrammed. And understand that they happen on different timelines and you can choose your own timeline. You can choose what resonates with you. You can choose to follow what is best for your energy, but don't then, uh, I just, I feel this judgment energy that um, we, we just want to be aware of because it, it, what happens Okay, so they're showing me that the any kind of judgment actually like takes us way back to the dark ages, right? Way back to the dark ages of um, how you also then could control people. So there's this interesting dichotomy right now of practicing detachment, practicing observing. 
being aware of your own energetic management and also being excited about what is opening up and what is going in, what humanity is going into because of these revolutions, because of these big energy changes that can't be ignored, um, but also being aware of the various agendas at play and how not everything is as it seems. And if you can also research that or go into that, you might find more information or more answers um, around, I'm hearing, you know, the Oz, the, the Wizard of Oz, who might be behind the big red curtains. It's, it's that kind of energy. Um, and there are a few people, there are a few people who are very much in control because they have the money to control these kinds of events and these kinds of developments. Um, and of course, it goes into the fact this is a very big year politically and a lot is at stake. In fact, everything is at stake. So there will be no holds barred in terms of what gets released, what comes out, what is fought over. Um, very, very big stuff coming. So keep in mind that that's the bigger picture here. Okay, multiple agendas on the planet, multiple levels of consciousness on the planet, um, a very big year politically, a very big year on the world stage, everything is at stake, and a lot of transitions happening that I feel are for the best overall, even when it's rocky and choppy as it goes and as it unfolds. And this is where we each come back to our solar plexus, and we come back to really strengthening what is true for us, uh, being very strong in your aura, uh, making sure that you're very strong in your chakras, and also looking at where your energy is needed next, where you're feeling that call, that new call of your soul, because that's also coming forward, as I said, with this Sagittari Sagittarius lunar eclipse. So it's a very big time, and um, of course, you're probably fully aware of that, but I just hope that this gives you some ways to operate and move through your life with a sense of what is correct for you and to honor that within yourself. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining me in today's podcast. Uh, please take good care of yourself over this next week. Remember, you can look on my YouTube channel at not only the Sagittarius full moon lunar eclipse, but also the playlist of the USA natal chart where I talk about uh, the energies of revolution that are going to be unfolding in the next few years. And you can find out my latest classes and programs over at mollymccord.online or even check out my author website at consciouscoolchic.com where I have audiobooks, physical books, ebooks, uh, spiritual teachings, and consciousness topics that I hope support you wherever you are in your journey right now. Thank you so much for being here. I'll be back on Monday with another podcast. And of course, I'll be back every Wednesday with another update on the energies of the week ahead. So thanks for joining me, friends, and I'll see you soon.